Greetings, fellow Earthlings. Today is September 2nd, 2024, and this is episode 33 of Mind Mosaic. Every month is a new subject, and this month we will be diving into the world of business. So let's get right into it and explore how the economy is rigged against us and what we can do about it. Our planet is a wellspring of natural abundance, offering resources that can support and sustain all life in all its forms. The Earth offers an inexhaustible supply of energy from the radiant power of the sun to the relentless, unwavering force of wind and water. Imagine the Earth as a massive battery charged with energy, waiting to be tapped into by anyone who dares to harness it. Yet, despite this natural abundance, many of us are burdened by a gnawing sense of lack, a feeling of being unable to make ends meet, a sense of fear of, well, ultimately homelessness and starvation. This is no accident. We've been led to believe that we have to compete, consume, and toil endlessly in order to acquire our share of the natural resources available on this planet. This belief is not rooted in reality. In fact, it is a carefully constructed narrative designed to keep us compliant as workers and voracious as consumers. Humanity was presented with this and decided to create the 40-hour work week and minimum wage. Manufactured scarcity operates like a well-oiled machine, manipulating our perceptions to keep us in a state of perpetual need. Corporations thrive on a sense of lack, convincing us that what we have is never enough and what we need is always out of reach. This manufactured scarcity serves a dual purpose. It drives up demand, inflating profits, and it keeps us tethered to the cycle of work and consumption. Afraid to step off the hamster wheel for fear of losing out, or worse. False scarcity. A tactic as old as commerce itself involves manipulating supply and demand to create a sense of urgency and need where there is none. Corporations often propagate the myth that good jobs are scarce. This strategy taps into our most primal fears, fear of missing out, being left behind, not having enough. Ultimately, the fear of death and not being able to get by. These fears are the lifeblood of consumerism, and without them, the wheels of profit-driven economics would grind to a halt. When we're convinced that something is limited, we're more likely to spend, compete, and conform, fueling a cycle of consumption engineered by those who stand to benefit the most from it. Nowhere is the illusion of scarcity more evident than in the fashion industry. Here, scarcity is meticulously crafted through limited edition drops, seasonal collections, and the relentless turnover of trends and fads. Customers are incentivized to buy now or risk missing out. But the truth is that the shelves are overstocked and the clothes that we buy often end up in landfills, barely or never worn. The scarcity we perceive is not in the availability of clothes. It is in the artificially created sense of urgency that drives us to consume more than we need. By convincing us that something is rare, corporations can charge more for it sell more of it, or both. The tech industry plays a very similar game, particularly with the release of new gadgets and devices. Companies like Apple have perfected the art of planned obsolescence. 
introducing incremental upgrades that make last year's model seem outdated. Consumers, fearing this obsolescence, rush to buy the latest model even when their current model is perfectly functional. This cycle perpetuates the myth of scarcity, of always needing the next big thing. Planned obsolescence in the tech industry divvies up demand and profits while the planet bears the burden of excessive waste and resource extraction. Even our most basic need, food, has not escaped the clutches of manufactured scarcity. Despite the Earth's ability to produce more than enough food to feed every human being, we are bombarded with messages of incoming shortages and the need to hoard. Supermarkets manipulate supply and demand, often by discarding perfectly edible food in order to maintain high prices. And meanwhile, millions go hungry. Not because there isn't enough food, but because artificial scarcity has skewed the proper distribution of these resources. So I'm sure you're asking yourself the question, how do we escape? How do we transcend this dystopian situation? And I think the answer lies in realizing it. To shatter the illusion of false scarcity, we need to recognize it for what it is a carefully constructed lie designed to keep us in line. The truth is, the Earth has more than enough resources to go around. If only we learned to manage those resources properly. The fashion, tech, and food industries, among others, thrive on making us feel like we're always one step behind, perpetually in a state of need. But once we can see through this, we will realize that scarcity is not a fact of life. It is a tool that's been used to control us. A tool that we can choose to reject. Corporations thrive on scarcity. And so they manufacture it, creating the very hunger that they profit from. False scarcity is the smoke and mirrors of capitalism, hiding the truth that there is, in fact, more than enough to go around. So imagine the power of embracing a new paradigm, one where scarcity is recognized as the illusion that it is and abundance is acknowledged as the reality. Simply by shifting our mindset, we can break free of the cycle of consumption and competition and learn to actually live in harmony with the natural world once again. This shift doesn't just change our individual lives. It has the power to transform everything. By transcending the illusion of false scarcity, we can begin to enjoy the true abundance of resources that this planet so freely provides. The real scarcity is not in resources, but in our awareness of how we are being manipulated. As more people awaken to the truth, we can begin to create a world where resources are shared and not hoarded, and where collaboration replaces competition, and where the wealth of the earth can be freely enjoyed by all of us, not just a select few. This vision is not a vision. It's the real world, one of true abundance that's just waiting to be seen for what it is.